I'll let. Do... Okay, I think we're recording. Okay. All right, folks, thanks so much for joining us. Um, we are going to be uh, closing video as we can, um, just because we're gonna be recording this. So um, as other folks are coming in, um, it's not you, it's us. We're trying to uh, make this presentation worthy, but um, thank you so much for joining us. We're gonna get started and as other folks join in, they'll just have to catch up. Um, thank you for taking the time out of your Tuesday night. We hope that this is helpful not only as you look at center, but are looking at the entire college search. Uh, my name is Thomas Becker. I'm an admission counselor at center. I've been back here for one year, uh, but I graduated from center in 2015. And in the meantime, I've worked in graduate admission and also as a college counselor at a boarding school. So um, lots of fun around the proverbial admission desk. Um, and I am joined here by two of my excellent colleagues and I'll turn it over to Annie first. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Annie Murphy. Um, I'm, I'm also a member of the admission staff here at Center. I have been a member of the staff for eight years, but I'm also a Center alum. And in between um, attending Center and working for Center, I was a, a high school and middle school teacher. So um, great to have you guys here. We appreciate it. And I am David DeWitt. Uh, I also am a center graduate from a very long time ago. Uh, <laughs> I uh, have done a, a few other things, but most of my adult life have been have worked in college admission. Uh, and for most of that time here at Center College, I have worked at a couple of other places, but I've been uh, in the center admission office for 22 years straight now. So we're delighted to have you join us um, and hope we can give you some useful information. Uh, I think I'll get us started here. I, uh, uh, so welcome to the financial aid process at Center College. Uh, I'll run through sort of our uh, agenda for the, for the next hour or so. Um, we're going to talk first about sort of the timeline for the admission process here at Center. Uh, we'll go over some of the financial aid forms uh, that are typical in the process and typical and specific to Center College. Um, we're, we'll then talk a little bit about some tools uh, that you could make use of uh, even now uh, to, to begin estimating your cost uh, here at Center College. Um, then we'll, we'll run through the, the, the process a little bit, give you some of the jargon and, and talk about how uh, uh, we would calculate need, uh, uh, which need-based financial aid obviously is then based upon. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the different types of aid. Um, there, uh, I think people in, uh, typically have in mind uh, federal financial aid grants, but they're, uh, they're institutional aid. There's a lot of different sources here. and We'll run through that list for you as well. Then we'll talk specifically about scholarship opportunities uh, here at Center. Um, so have a brief word about scholarships. Uh, that Center College does not award uh, from outside sources. And then we're gonna save some time at the end for questions and answers. So when we look at the timeline uh, specifically for here at Center, oh, and I should mention, and I, I think maybe I jumped the gun uh, and interrupted something Thomas was gonna say, which I just now realized, and I apologize. Uh, so therefore I should mention uh, there is a chat function uh, and as we as we move along here, if you would uh, type in any questions into the chat function um, so that it, as, when we get to the end, we'll try to address the specific concerns that you have. So I apologize, Thomas. I had one job and I've already gone. Um, so the timeline that we're looking at, um, the, the free application for federal student aid, uh, typically referred to as the FAFSA, it is a federal form. Uh, that you can fill out once and submit to lots of different places. That will be available uh, in uh, starting in October uh, of the student's senior year. 
Um, there is actually a version of the FAFSA available now, but it is not. If, if you are a rising high school senior, it is not the version you'll want to complete. You will not uh, we'll want to wait until October to use that form. Uh, dates and deadlines specific here to center. Um, our, uh, the earliest application um, option that we have is early decision, and we will notify in late December, early January, our early decision uh, financial aid awards will be released. Uh, students would need to apply by November 15th to operate under that plan. Uh, then next is early action. We will release financial aid awards uh, for early action admitted students in February. Uh, the deadline to apply for early action here at Center is December 1st. And, and then our latest application option, which we call regular decision, there's a, an application deadline of January 15th for regular decision, and those financial aid awards to admitted students will be released in March. Um, and then May 1st, you'll see at the bottom of the screen there, uh, May 1st is a generally agreed upon date for colleges and universities across the country. Uh, it's decision day, it's the enrollment deadline or deposit deadline. That's when high school seniors are supposed to make up their mind and decide uh, where they want to uh, enroll and, and inform the colleges uh, of that choice. Um, students obviously are welcome to make their decision earlier if they're in a position to do so, uh, but May 1st is, is sort of a, the last available date for that. Uh, for, uh, for anyone who's been paying attention uh, to the current admission cycle, uh, COVID-19 has, has thrown uh, everyone's plans to the wind wind and many colleges including center moved their deposit deadline date to june 1st to give as folks were dealing with weird and unusual circumstances um, giving families a little bit more time to make that decision uh, as i say centers not was not alone in that a lot of colleges did it uh, we our assumption will be that we'll be in a more normal mode uh, by next spring and we'll return to that May 1st deadline. Uh, but it is, it's, it's a thing um, that could be impacted by unusual circumstances. So the financial aid forms that are relevant here at Center College, the, uh, the FAFSA, I mentioned earlier, free application for federal student aid, um, that, that is a federal form. Uh, you'll see the, the website there, fafsa.ed.gov. Um, it's a form you can, it's a federal form. Uh, you fill out the form. It is submitted through a federal agency which works its magic and sends its, the results of its calculations to whatever colleges you want to have that information. Uh, most everyone will file that form online these days. Uh, and if you do that, you can, uh, if you submit it to th two or three colleges at the time you complete the form, but then you become interested in another college or two later, you can go back in and then have the information forwarded to those particular colleges. Uh, it is a federal form, but it is the tool that I think most colleges and universities use to determine how they will distribute their own funds. It's, it's not just a, a vehicle for you to find out about federal financial aid. Institutional aid, as well as state funds in some cases are part of that. Here at Center, we have our own additional financial aid form. We have given it the not very clever title of Center Aid Form. Uh, it's a supplement. It's, it's a very simple form relative to the FAFSA. It's one page front and back, uh, but it collects a little bit more information that's useful to us in our financial aid process. Some colleges will have their own supplemental form. A lot won't. It's, it's unfortunately a thing you need to ask of all the colleges you become interested in, uh, but it is a required piece of the process here at Center. We, we cannot complete a financial aid package um, or offer it to you until we have that piece as well as the, the FAFSA. Uh, there's one other form that you ought to be aware of. It's the CSS profile. Uh, it, it, it is not an institutional form. It is a broadly used form or somewhat broadly used. Uh, it, it is not a form we require here at Center College. The, the primary, one of the primary differences between the CSS profile and the FAFSA, note that fa the, the first F in FAFSA 
stands for free, uh, the CSS profile is a form that requires a fee to fill out, uh, which is why we don't use it. But some colleges might. So again, as you, um, a lot of what we're going to talk about uh, in, in the next little bit is, is, um, is, if not universal, is somewhat common to a lot of different institutions. Uh, but some of the process is pretty specific to institutions. So whether a school uses the FAFSA or the CSS profile will be an individual uh, question you'll need to ask. And then I, okay. oh, yes, I'm sorry, I'm gonna turn it over to you. <laughs> Hi, thank you, David, appreciate it. So um, what I'm gonna do is, is talk us through, um, you know, this financial aid process can feel uh, I think sometimes very vague, like you kind of put your information out there, it goes into some kind of big black box and, um, and you're not quite sure uh, what your cost is going to be versus the sticker, the sticker price. Um, we have this very clever thing, don't bank on the sticker price. Um, at Center, I know um, many of our families are, most of them, I, I bet all of them are concerned about our sticker price and kind of what is it that that my family might be um, be asked to, to um, contribute for Center College and for the education there. Um, so what we've done is we've put together, I think, some really, really helpful tools for families um, so that you know now a little bit more information that can really help you in your process. So we actually have two ways that you can um, kind of hone in on a, on a cost that might be more specific to, to your student, to your family. Um, so we've got two of these, these kind of tools or calculators. So the first one, it's called My Intuition. Um, My Intuition is actually a nonprofit organization. Um, it, it's founded by a, a um, incredibly smart, uh, professor who decided that, wow, it would be really great if families had a little bit more clarity earlier in this process. Um, so Center College is, is partnered with My Intuition as well as about 60 other kind of top colleges and universities in the United States. Um, the benefit to this, I recommend this to everybody who's embarking on this college search, because um, it's only three to five minutes. It asks six questions. Um, and in that time, it's a very small investment of your time, you're going to get some, some pretty general um, good initial financial aid information. Um, it'll provide kind of a range of, of what center might cost. The great thing is too, once you put in your information, let's say you see some other colleges on there, um, on there that you might be interested in too, you can just, you don't have to re-enter your information. So you could actually get an estimate that say, you know, 10 schools um, in, in about 15 minutes or probably less than that. So, um, so it's kind of your rough but quick um, calculator you might want to check out. Uh, we also have a more specific calculator that is really more so geared to Center College's variety of scholarships, financial aid. It includes um, information that is specific for Kentucky families. If you are watching here and you are in Kentucky, you know you're eligible for, for keys money and potentially some other um, grant programs that are specific to the state of Kentucky. Um, anyway, so, so there's a little bit more kind of on the back end of that calculator that is specific to center. Um, it is gonna take a little bit longer for you. It's gonna ask a little bit more specific information about say your you know, tax information, AGI, some assets in order to, to give you a much more um, accurate estimate. So again, regardless of kind of what schools end up being on your list, I'm a big proponent of the more information earlier in the process kind of takes a lot of stress out of this process and um, is something I very much recommend. So you can check out the website there, um, or if you just were to put in Center College um, net price calculator or calculator, that'd get you there too. So the next thing I wanna talk about is this notion of need. We we've hear this word need-based financial aid. Um, we work with a lot of different families and what I have found throughout my uh, career helping families is that your conception of need may be very, very different than the institution's conception of need. Um, 
lots of families will say, oh, you know, I just really don't think we're going to qualify for anything. What's the point of engaging with this financial aid process? Um, and my recommendation is um, let us do that work. If, if you, if you can, you know, take the hour or so to fill out the required forms, it could be a real benefit um, financially um, for, for the student. So, so let's talk a little bit about how we get at that number. Um, so first off, we, st we start with the full cost of attendance. So that's going to include the comprehensive fee, which for us, we bundle in tuition, room and board. Um, some places kind of separate those, those things out, but for us, because we're a residential college, pretty much everybody lives on campus, it makes sense to go ahead and just bundle those together. That would be where it says um, charge direct costs. Um, and then we also estimate those other important costs, the cost of books, transportation to campus. Um, you know, if you live in California, you're gonna have to take a flight a couple times a year in order to get here. So, um, so, what, what, so that's the kind of full cost of attendance. Then based on the information that we've gathered from the FAFSA and then that short additional form called the center aid form that, that David discussed earlier, um, so basically behind the scenes there, the FAFSA is going to take your information, put it through their formulas. Um, they're going to come back with a number. Um, what they're doing is they're looking at kind of aggregate data and they say, hey, a family like this with say this income level, this number of students in college, the parents are say this close to retirement age, uh, they add all these complicated formulas you know, together and they come back with a number. Um, it's called your expected family contribution or EFC. If you're not familiar with that term, um, we love using um, acronyms here in, in the admission world. So EFC might be something that you hear. So it's basically kind of an, uh, of an index of what the institution will take a look at and say, hey, okay, well, this is what we think this family can, can reasonably kind of afford or kind of absorb for um, a year of education. So we have that number, the cost of attendance, um, whatever's the, the remainder is what your need would be. So um, what we do is basically, let's say you're, uh, you know, the, the full cost is up here. You've got, um, you know, your need somewhere down here. Financial aid is what's filling in that gap. Um, so for us at Center College, what we find is that for some families, we absolutely meet that need um, through a variety of, of funding um, types, which we'll discuss in a second. Um, for some families, we really exceed it. Um, and, and it ends up being that um, through scholarships or whatever, or financial aid, um, that might uh, make it even more affordable to afford the college. So. That's how we get at your, your need when it comes to need-based financial aid. All right, thanks, Annie. Um, so I'm going to talk us through generally the four types of aid that are available to students. Um, any family may be eligible for any combination of these. So it's really important that you not write any of them off just based on, you know, oh, well, I don't think I'd be eligible or I don't think I'd qualify. Um, we do that work for you, like Annie and David said. So um, please feel free to give us that information so that we can um, provide you with the best estimate to meet you where you are as best you can, or in some cases, go beyond where you are. Um, the four types of aid, and this is very general. Um, this is what you're going to encounter at any college or university. Um, their definitions might be a little different. Ours, these are pretty much the general, generally held, widely accepted definitions. So the first is scholarships. First thing you need to know is that they don't need to be repaid. They could come from center. There are a variety of scholarships we'll talk about in a little bit, or they could be external. But the moral of the story is these are earned monies that you don't need to repay. Along with the don't need to repay category are grants. Um, these could be institutional. Center has a number of grants that we use in a variety of ways, whether that's going to better meet need or better reflect our institutional priorities. There could be federal grants you'd be eligible for. The Pell Grant is often one that people think of as a federal grant, um, but there also might be some state grants. There are a number of Kentucky grants available to students as well. Uh, circling around, work study also does not need to be repaid. 
It is a need-based federal award. Um, you work a job, you earn those funds, and those funds can be used however you see fit. The reason why we lump it in as a type of aid is because you are only eligible for work study as an undergraduate student. So there's no other way that you would have access to these funds that you wouldn't have to repay, but it is ultimately up to the student who is working that job, how those monies are to be used. So if they wanna use it for tuition, they can do that. If they want to use it as a little bit of cushion and are getting some loans in another place, they can do that. But there are no restrictions on that fund once you get it. The final category there are loans. Loans um, have pretty much the same definition whether you're in a college setting or you're not. They must be repaid. There are federal loan options. Some states do have options as well. And then there are private loan options. The ones that we deal with the most here at Center are federal because you fill out FAFSA, we have access to that information and we can facilitate that process rather easily. Um, we will of course work with any private loans that are brought in, those are just a little less common. Center offers a very wide variety of scholarships. So in thinking about um, any college or university, this is probably where um, you might want to spend some time in thinking about those ways to bring that cost of attendance down. Because like we said, you shouldn't bank on the sticker price. This is one of the primary ways that Center brings that sticker price down for a lot of folks. Over on the left-hand side of your screen, you'll see general merit. General merit scholarships require absolutely no additional action on the part of the student. All you need to do is apply to Center College. You click your submit button, you are automatically evaluated for general merit. Um, it's kind of a ladder system. We don't have a point deduction system, like you're not doing things or you haven't accomplished certain things. Um, but for outstanding students, every accolade, every course you're doing well in, every good word that we get from a recommender, your essay, we look at the quality of your application as a whole and you work your way up those scholarship levels. So anywhere from $7,500 to $27,000 a year, uh, you don't need to apply for it separately. That's just based on you as a center college applicant. We also have a number of separate scholarships. They do require a separate application, but these are special based on certain interest areas. Performing arts and language scholarships are stackable scholarships. So you can put those on top of any general merit you are awarded. They do require an audition or an interview, respectively, for performing arts and language. Um, but this can be a really great way to capitalize on some high school achievement, but also some interest you might have in continuing that study or extracurricular investment in the collegiate setting. We also have two other special scholarships, the New Horizons program, which focuses on diversity leadership, diversity in all of its forms, and the Bonner Scholars Program, which is for service leadership with a special bent towards social justice. Those two special scholarships are not stackable. So if you're awarded New Horizons or Bonner, that will supersede any general merit. As you can see, it's that same amount, that top $27,000 a year. Uh, and all of these scholarships are renewable as well. You don't need to reapply for them. They're part of your financial aid package as a center student. We are very lucky uh, as a small institution. I know David and Annie have been in this game a lot longer than I have, um, but I've seen a lot of schools and not many our size can boast three premier scholarship programs. Um, the Brown, Grissom, and Lincoln scholars uh, comprise 30 members of every incoming class, so 10 in each program, 30 every year, uh, and they kind of target different high achieving demographics within the realm of student. So the Brown Fellows um, is your academic achievement folks. They are model scholars. They are folks who enjoy learning and research. They are the top tier students um, in most of the environments that they find themselves in. The Brown Fellows Scholarship is full cost plus. So that entire total charged costs number that Annie talked about, what many folks will call our comprehensive fee, is completely taken care of, plus there's funding available for research, internships, and other creative academic endeavors. You do need to apply separately for that program, just like the special scholarships. The Grissom Scholars Program is specifically for first-generation college students, folks who have a very high capacity for leadership potential, especially. 
Um, we also have a very high bar in terms of academic achievement, but um, this is definitely an access-based program. We uh, feel very strongly that first-generation college students should have some of these opportunities that others may not have been able to in the past. Uh, that is a full tuition plus scholarship. So it's gonna cover all of tuition plus funding available for room and board for other fees. And again, funding to assist with internship programs or research. The Lincoln Scholars Program has a very broad tagline. It's for folks with the desire and capacity to change the world. Uh, you might be thinking to yourself, well, I, I could change the world, I can do that. Um, and that's awesome, would love for you to apply to the Lincoln Program. These are folks who tend to be very creative and very inquisitive. They're folks who are especially globally conscious, thinking about the role that they have as a global citizen within a wider world community. And like the Brown program, that is full cost plus. So it's gonna cover all of those charged costs plus funding available for other things. Uh, and you apply separately for that one. So that's kind of a picture of what scholarshiping looks like at Center College. It is a very robust program, um, and we like to reward students for doing well. Um, I think one thing we often find in the application reading process and in financial aid is that folks might be hesitant to share their successes. Um, they don't wanna be braggadocious or too proud. This is your moment to be braggadocious and proud. We want to know all of the great things you've been doing and know that there is a direct reflection of that within your application evaluation and ultimately your scholarship evaluation process. So just something to keep in mind there for you. Outside scholarships. So I will not read this whole thing um, to you all, but for those of you who are listening, I will sum it up in a nutshell. Uh, we at Center College are not going to be the ones to advise you on a search for external scholarships. We strongly encourage you to go seek out Google, check your, you know, the, your local diner, the cork board by the front door, um, find those opportunities where outside scholarships might be incorporated into your center award. Um, and also work with your college counselor or your guidance counselor or your academic resource center, whoever it is at your high school that is kind of the keeper of the college process. They will have plentiful resources. I say this as a former college counselor myself um, that can help you build out those opportunities, identifying things that are specific to your interests and your gifts and talents and passions. Um, and we can absolutely apply any scholarship dollars you earn to your center financial aid package. So don't worry about missing out on center scholarships. Uh, if you have external ones, bring them on in. It can only help you. It will never hurt you to bring in those external scholarships. So we have a few minutes before closing. If there are any questions, I don't know if folks can see the chat box. I cannot, Annie and David. So if you all see anything in there, um, yay, nay. Not, not yet, but not potentially yet. we would, yeah. Well, we'll give it a minute or two. If you all think of anything, we hope that this has been uh, helpful, at least in providing a broad brush approach. Um, you know, one of the aims of this center seminar series that we are doing every Tuesday night at five o'clock, different theme every week, um, is to provide you not only with some center information, right? Because we know center and love center and want to contribute um, to the life of the college that we all went to. Um, but we know it's also useful for you as you are embarking on your journey and looking at other schools. Odds are, um, we are not going to be the location that everyone who tunes into these sessions will attend. Um, so we want to give you some useful information. We want you um, to be able to take this and run with it, whether you're going to end up at center or not. Looks like we have a little blinky thing over here. Yeah, we do. Um, so we have a, a really great question. Um, and the question is, does financial aid carry over to pay for study abroad? Um, and the answer is, is yes. If you are doing one of our semester long study abroad programs, whatever your total you know, bill would be to be on campus for that semester, all of your scholarships and financial aid kind of you know, go with you. Um, and so you're gonna have that same fee to do one of our semester long um, experiences. And we have uh, nine of those uh, right now. 
hopefully we, um, there may be some adjustments to those in the fall, of course, but, um, but, but we love our study abroad. We want it to be accessible. We want it to be um, within everyone's reach. Um, in addition to our semester long programs at Center, Center also has this um, fun kind of bonus term that we call center term. It's in the center of the year. We're very cute with the word center around here. So the center term um, that takes place during the month of January. Um, many, many students are on campus during that term. They're taking one class pretty intensely for three and a half weeks. Um, many of the offerings during that center term are um, use kind of the world as the classroom. And so we do have professors who will take students um, abroad during that shorter center term. Um, those, those programs, they are, because they're kind of not part of the regular term, you can kind of opt into them. There are some fees for those typically. Um, and, uh, you know, they range, say, anywhere from, say, $2,000 to $3,000 is about typical, but there are additional financial aid opportunities specifically for those center term programs. Absolutely. Great question. Great question, indeed. Um, well, I think that's about all we had. If folks have any other additional questions, now is your moment. Um, but as we close, feel free to still put your question in the chat box. Um, let me speak for our team and then I will let them speak as well uh, in conveying our gratitude for you tuning in. There are lots of things that folks can do in this age of being remotely separated and um, a lot of us are spending a lot of time in front of screens. So um, we're grateful you took the time to learn a little bit more about Center. We hope this information is useful. Please feel free to reach out to any or all of us with any questions you might have. All of our contact information is available on the center website and you should have also received the information for your individual counselor um, when you registered for this event. So please feel free to be in touch. Thanks for joining us. Um, and I'll let Annie sign off and then David sign off and then we'll stop sharing. Great. Well, thank you again so much for coming. Um, I will say if you have questions about financial aid or scholarships, even if they're not just for center college, if you're looking for some general kind of guidance, um, just, that's our job. We're counselors for, you know, that's, that's our job. So please let us know if we can help you in any way. Yeah, I would echo that. I think uh, um, you might naturally assume um, that uh, folks in one admission office are very competitive with people in other admission offices and other colleges. And to some degree, that's true. Um, but we really do like to, to think of ourselves as counselors first and then recruiters for our individual uh, colleges. So if, if we can help you find the place that's right for you uh, with regard to financial assistance, with regard to just, you know, general uh, questions about college and finding fit, um, that we, we get a great deal of joy <laughs> from doing that. So thank you for being with us this evening. Thank you all so much. Appreciate you taking the time. Have a great rest of your evening. Feel free to be in touch uh, and go Colonels. <laughs> Take care, y'all. Bye-bye.